While some contestants became executive chefs, others gave up cooking for good. But this sous chef from Ohio, who gained quite the reputation for being the most disliked contestant on the show, seems to have stooped down even further. Meet the patriarchy's best friend, Jason Underwood. He's objectively the worst person to have ever appeared on the show. From the very beginning, Jason wasn't exactly subtle about his contempt for women. Being anti-feminist is one thing, but this guy had absolutely no filter when he spoke his mind. If you remember, Jason stirred up quite the controversy when he proclaimed to be the winner of Hell's Kitchen even before the season was halfway done. If not, here, let me refresh your memory, just listen to this. It's Jason who won Hell's Kitchen and has to beat women off with a stick for God's sake. I mean, how is this even okay? Apparently, this arrogant and misogynist man is now married and the father of two kids. God, I really feel bad for those two. Especially if you believe this Reddit user who claims that Jason is registered on a few unsavory lists. But you know what? It's really not hard to believe this at all. In fact, throughout the show, he couldn't resist making comments to degrade and belittle women. He took every chance he got. According to him, apparently, the only thing women are good at is ironing. Such a douchebag. But let's talk about his cooking skills, or his lack thereof. It's pretty clear that he wasn't the most reliable chef out there. When his team needed him most, where was he? Outside taking a smoke break. Because, of course, that was way more important than actually doing his job. I mean, do you remember when he just disappeared right in the middle of the service, and Chef Ramsay had to literally desert everything just to go and look for him? I don't think any contestant made Chef Ramsay run after them like this. Jason! 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 You know what? Chef Ramsay's voice continues to ring in my ears till this very day. And when Jason finally graced the kitchen with his presence, he served a risotto that was so bad, even Ramsay couldn't stomach it. That's how shit you've been. I don't want any more embarrassment. I just want to go with some food! In fact, he was so mad that he even made Jason eat his own crap. I want you to taste what you're trying to serve Hell's Kitchen. But instead of taking responsibility for his failures, what did Jason do? Double down on his misogyny, of course. He vowed to never lose to the girls again and went to the extent of calling them little kids. What a charming guy. And let's not forget his oh-so-enlightened comments about how women were only good for Tupperware parties. Trust me, this guy doesn't even belong in this world. But even with all of his big talk, Jason couldn't seem to back it up in the kitchen. He was constantly messing up. From raw halibut to communication issues with his teammates, Jason was screwing up big time. And don't even get me started on his souffle disaster. I'm trying something new. I'm gonna put a little sugar and rub it around the rim and try to get that. So when Chef Ramsay finally had enough of his nonsense and threw him out, it wasn't exactly a surprise. If you truly think that he was just planted by the production team to manufacture controversies, then think again. Turns out this dude was actually tamer than his usual self on the show. A Reddit user posted a bunch of tweets made by Jason that revealed what a degenerate he truly is. Imagine posting something like this on National Pizza Day. See what I mean? That's vile. No, he's vile. I really don't understand why he has to make everything sound so obscene. And it doesn't end there. Apparently, this dude actually goes around objectifying women even today. One would expect that he must have unlearned his biases with time, but no. He's just as awful as he was years ago. He's not only a sexist pig, but also a disgusting pervert. Brace yourselves for this next comment. Guess who, or rather, what he's been referring to? I found the answer right here on another Reddit user's account. For context, the fourth tweet is referring to animals. Really shows how fucked he is. Like I said, I think he was way better on the show. However, he didn't fail to display his aggression whenever he had a chance to. Like the time when the men's team lost a challenge, he was surprised that the women could beat them. I think the girls have a clue what they're doing. What do you expect without a man over there to lead them, of course? By this time, he had turned into an intolerable mess that Chef Ramsay had to throw him out before he could spread more hate between the teams. Jason actually gave up before the service even ended. And you know how Chef Ramsay hates people who can't take the heat? Well, so much for being a man, huh? He couldn't even wait till the service ended. But now, let's get into what Jason has been doing after the show. Now, as you can see, he's pretty busy setting an example of what not to be. He's still a loser, gave up cooking, and is settled in Youngstown, Ohio. Not that he had any real talent in cooking anyway. He, however, did have a brief stint at Capo's restaurant, but that's all in the past now. As of now, he claims to be a wrestler and a political commentator on Twitter. 
If you just take one look at his profile, you'll see that he's a hate-filled bigot dissing minorities on the app. And let's not forget that he's really been busy serving society, guys. Yeah, by spreading misinformation and conspiracy theories, like refuting the usefulness of vaccines. Some people are just beyond help. I know for sure that Jason will forever remain a foul-mouthed bully. But this next contestant was Jason's polar opposite. Did you know he almost made Chef Ramsay cry? That was one hell of an emotional moment. And I'm referring to the warmest slash most loved contestant on the show. People love to call him Mr. 100. Any guesses? Yep, I'm talking about the one and only Sterling Wright. I'm always 100. What's his 100? I'm 100%. You know? Okay. Lately, he seems to be living the life of his dreams just like he deserves. Wright was a contestant in season 13 who ranked in 7th place. He had an optimistic and infectious energy on the show. And if you think it was all for the cameras, then you're dead wrong. Here's the truth, he didn't fake anything. While looking for his whereabouts, I stumbled upon this post on Reddit where a user detailed Sterling's journey after the show. The post spoke about how Sterling turned down a really good high paying job only to work as a chef at a local hospital. Apparently, this was the very same hospital which had treated his sister for cancer and also saved his adoptive mom's life with an elaborate heart operation. Sterling couldn't think of a better way to offer his thanks than to join the team at the hospital. In an interview, he also shared that cooking for him isn't about the money, it's about love. If a quote could define Sterling, then this is the one. But there's more to Sterling than just that. Despite being highly religious, Sterling is also a huge advocate for LGBT rights. He even posted a profile picture of him and his wife celebrating National Pride Day. The aftermath of the post shook things up for him a bit since he was accused of letting down the Christian community. But Sterling got back with the perfect response. He said that it's not right to judge anyone who loves anyone regardless of them being the same gender. And what can I say but amen to that, brother. People like him just restore your faith in humanity. And oh yes, Sterling believes in impact over income, something that he's also written about on his social media bio. As the Reddit user confirmed, he's still working at St. Thomas Midtown. To him, the act of cooking is more than just a job or a chore. It's a way of giving back to the place that gave him so much. And the impact of his gesture is felt far beyond the walls of the cafeteria. It's in the smiles of the hospital who appreciate his dedication. It's in the tears of the patients and visitors who are touched by his selflessness and compassion. It's also in the hearts of anyone who hears this story and is inspired to pay it forward in their own way. In a world where we often get caught up in our own lives, this man's act of generosity reminds us of the power of gratitude and the ripple effect of kindness. That's why his elimination on the show made me pretty emotional. Turns out, I'm not the only one. Listen, continue yeah. cooking. I will, chef. This was probably one of the most wholesome eliminations in the history of the show. Contestants from both teams were reduced to tears. Well, that's my man Sterling for you. And it's not just the contestants on the show, Reddit was flooded with a ton of appreciation posts for him as well. Like, take a look at this thread where a user shared a heartfelt message saying, there's nothing better than someone who tries to keep everyone's spirits up like that. I can't agree with this more, I mean this man truly has a heart of gold. Another user pointed out that Chef Ramsay was a tad bit emotional, despite being the one responsible for eliminating Sterling. Did you catch that during the elimination as well? Thank you. And let that be a reminder of what you've achieved in this competition. Chef Ramsay was trying his best not to break down during the elimination, but he knew how great of a cook Sterling was. In fact, if you remember, Ramsay even allowed him to keep his jacket. When you put smiles on all of our faces, I want you to keep your jacket. As he left, Sterling only had positive things to share about his journey on the show. And I can't agree more with his closing sentence when he said this. I got something that nobody in Hell's Kitchen have never accomplished. I got Chef Ramsay heart. Now, I could assure you that this statement he just made is 100% true. He will always be Mr. 100. It's almost been a decade since Sterling left the show, but he continues to live in the hearts of millions of people. One fan rightly said, the world does not deserve Sterling, but Sterling deserves the world. However, this next contestant is one of Jason Underwood's pals. Well, I don't mean literally, but both of them shared a similar temperament. While you might wish to see more people like Sterling, there are sadly tons more like Frank Kala. I'm sure you remember him from season 15 for being the biggest jerk on the show. After being kicked off, Frank did what any real man would do, he blamed the women on his team. Ah, <sighs> a tale as old as time. But then, he made this explicit remark. And that's exactly why I get fucking female marines and I send them back wherever the fuck they came from. Ah, <sighs> just another douchebag. How do these people look so comfortable making such derogatory comments? 
I'll never be able to understand that. Well, this video got posted on a Facebook group called End Gender Bias in the Military, and the Marine Corps was quick to condemn what he said. They even mentioned that they're figuring out what appropriate actions to take. In order to save his butt, Frank issued a half-hearted apology. I want to apologize for my comments made shortly after my elimination on Hell's Kitchen Friday night. I have nothing but the utmost respect for my fellow Marines, regardless of gender. And I want to apologize from the bottom of my heart to everybody that I've disappointed. People were really quick to call out his insincerity. One person said that it looked like he was reading out of a script, while the other called his BS and said that he didn't even look very sorry. What do you think? Did he even mean a word of what he said? Turns out, Frank was dismissed from his position as a chef for the commandant. According to Captain Diane Rosenfeld of Marine Barracks in Washington, D.C., Sergeant Kella has been reassigned to the Marine Enlisted Aid Program. In the show, he loved to intimidate those around him by showing off his Marine rank. In episode 1, he showed no empathy towards Kevin when he had a breakdown upon his elimination. Instead, he told him to toughen up and stop acting like a pussy. That's Rich coming from a guy who couldn't handle failure and rejection himself. In episode 3, during the Jackets Challenge, he went up against Ashley Nichol where he was talking smack about her burgers for being way too basic. But when it was his turn to make the sliders, he got roasted by Chef Ramsay for using liquid smoke when he wasn't supposed to. And what was the result? He lost the round to Ashley. Instead of admitting defeat, he had the audacity to say that Ashley only won because he lost. Yeah, right. The guy just couldn't handle being beaten fair and square by a woman. This inspired a lot of memes and all of them are hilarious like this one right here. So where's our insufferable macho man now? He's currently the chef de partie at Boulou Sud. It's a restaurant in New York and Miami specializing in Mediterranean dishes. For those of you who don't know, Chef de Partie is someone who's responsible for keeping a portion of line cooks or station chefs organized during production. Sometimes they might even assist with the preparation of plating. I guess this job suits him well because he was never executive chef material anyway. While scrolling through, I also came across this post where the restaurant was clearly looking to hire a new Chef de Partie. Does this spell trouble for Frank? I wouldn't be able to confirm that at this point, but I'll definitely update you if I hear something about it. But this next contestant from Season 5 taught viewers a very important lesson. It's always the people who take their defeats graciously that end up winning in life. A perfect example of this is Paula Da Silva. She was the runner-up of Season 5 and was adored for her professionalism and warmth. Her smile seemed to light up the room, don't you agree? To get to the point, Paula is a culinary rock star. After Hell's Kitchen in 2010, she landed the executive chef position at the swanky Eden Rock Hotel on South Beach. Her farm-to-table concept at 1500 degrees earned her glowing reviews and made her cuisine extremely popular. People raved about the soulful, seasonal, and rustic flavors she brought to the table. Esquire even named her restaurant one of the best new restaurants in America, and she was the semi-finalist for Best Chef South by the prestigious James Beard Foundation. But things changed and De Silva eventually left 1500 degrees. She took some time to travel and consult before coming back to 3030 Ocean as the executive chef. And let me tell you, she did not disappoint. Her second stint there saw her revitalizing the menu with her signature soulful style, which infused new life into the restaurant. Currently speaking, she's the director of culinary and beverage at the Ritz-Carlton in Fort Lauderdale. She's already proven herself to be a master of her craft, and now she'll be taking care of her skills to a whole other level at one of the most premium and luxurious hotels in the world. She'll be the one calling the shots and ensuring that everything runs smoothly in the hotel's many dining venues. From the food to the wine to the service, everything will be under her expert guidance. This is exciting news for all of her fans, and she totally deserves it, don't you think? Speaking on how she got hooked onto cooking, Paula said this in an interview. I suppose it goes back to my parents. They, they were restaurant owners. They had three restaurants. I grew up in it as a kid. Paula went on to say that she loved everything about cooking, the colors, the stress, the heat, and of course, the passion. I mean, she's easily among the top 10 most successful contestants from the show, don't you think? Next up, we have someone who the fans either loved or hated. There is simply no middle ground for this one. This contestant is probably one of the most notorious ones to date. While some loved his goofiness, others were pissed off by it. And no matter how many times I bring him up, it's never enough. No introductions for this one, I'm talking about the one and only Raj Branston. This guy was clueless most of the time, and his priorities were always mixed up. But there are many out there who think that he's a great chef, but just wasn't cut out for the show. And well, he even had a few supporters. 
like this one, who went on to say that Raj was no different than the other personal chefs who struggled on the show. But really? How do you explain putting his big fat head into the fridge just to cool himself off then? Or not giving a damn about anyone and eating in the middle of the service? As for Raj, he certainly holds some resentment against the show and has publicly called out Chef Ramsay. Yep, he really did. In 2020, he left a snarky little comment under Chef Ramsay's Twitter post that read, Dude, you know how badly you treated me? So, it looks like Raj has yet to move on, and so does the internet. The way he talked and behaved on the show inspired a whole bunch of jokes. I mean, this dude made such ridiculous and exaggerated claims that I kind of saw this coming. Were you aware that there's an Instagram account which calls itself Raj's fan page? But it mostly posts memes and sarcastic jokes making fun of the guy. If you miss Raj, then you know where to find him. But Raj seems to be doing fine, and he's actually even become pretty fit. As of 2021, he's been working at Frankel's in Brooklyn and also is catering for different venues like the Rockefeller Center. Good for him, right? But who knows, there may be even more times when contestants turn out to be completely different from what they were on the show. Only time can tell.